These are three bad habits that I picked up as a stock photographer that actually hurt my photography career. You don't do the same. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three habits, three things that I learned from years of doing stock photography that now that just seem normal, but can actually hurt a career in photography. But before we start, I got a quick question for you guys. I was looking at my analytics and YouTube says that I got viewers from the US, Canada, UK, India, and Indonesia. Where are you guys watching from? I'm curious. I wanna see where the reach of the channel has been growing like crazy uh, over the last couple of years. And I would like to know where people are watching from just so I get a little bit, uh, a better idea as to who my audience is. So if, let me know in the comments where you're from. And now, what are these bad habits? So the first bad thing I learned from stock photography is pricing. Because as stock photographers, we get used to making anywhere from six cents to a dollar for a photo on average. And then when it comes time to work with a client, we tend to undervalue ourselves. And that was something that really hurt me because you don't know what to charge. Now remember, we get paid six cents to sometimes a hundred dollars a photo. But how much do the stock agencies make? I did a quick search and I went into one of the stock agencies, one of the bigger ones, and they have different pricing structures, different plans, annual plans or, or usage plans. So they have the first plan. You can download two images a year with a limited use standard license, which is $29 for two photos. If you want the enhanced license, which is pretty much unlimited use, that's $200 for two images a year. So when you price yourself to different businesses, when you do work for people and you give them photos to do whatever they want with them, you should be at a minimum charging a hundred bucks a photo based on this pricing schedule. Now they do get cheaper the more images you do. Like if you buy five downloads a year, it goes to $49 on the standard license with limited use or $550 for the enhanced license. If you buy 25 a year, that's $229 for the standard license <laughs> and $1,699 for the enhanced license with, again, pretty much unlimited use. So if you're delivering to a client 25 photos and they can do whatever they want with them, you should be getting at least $1,699. Now in the past, I've done work like that. I've done uh, photo shoots where I do portraits for a couple hundred bucks, you know, or a hundred, 250 bucks, whatever it is. I've delivered a hundred images for $250. And that's not good. <laughs> Ooh, lights. 250 photos or $250 for a hundred images. That's $2 and 50 cents a photo. You can see how this can hurt your photography career. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of investment to recover your, your cost that way. It's gonna take a long time. So remember to price yourself accordingly. This is not something anybody can do. When you master your camera, you're special. We're all special. Now, yes, we also gotta remember that the agencies do all of our web hosting, marketing, and all that stuff, which is why they take a commission. But that shouldn't uh, affect you when you're doing all of that. When you do your own marketing, when you find your clients, when you do all this, you should get compensated the same way the agencies do. Anyway, let's keep that in mind and move on to the next point, which is overshooting. I've said this in many videos, stock photography is about numbers. So getting the same object from different angles, different variations, top, down, front, back, all this, that's great. For stock photography, that's awesome. But when you get hired by a client, let's say to shoot two salmon dishes or one dish, two photos of a salmon dish, and I delivered 10 plus a video because I couldn't decide. I took 25 images. They all look great. <laughs> I don't know how many to give. They asked for two and I give them 10. That is not exceeding client expectations. That is devaluing my work. That is giving more for less because they only wanted two. I can't charge them for 10. And it just makes it seem like my job is so easy that I could just take 10, 20 photos and that, that actually hurts you in the long run. For stock, yes. For private shoots, listen to what the client wants, stick to what they want, and don't get carried away shooting a thousand photos of one dish when they only ask for two. Remember, they only wanted two.
All right, now the third bad habit that I picked up from shooting stock, it's closely related to the other one, uh, overshooting, and that is undercooking your photos. You have to process your images. When you're shooting for stock, you wanna do volume, you do changes on one photo, you synchronize all your changes, you add a preset, and there's your final photo, you're done. But when you're shooting for a client, whatever you're photographing, whether it's their child, their pet, a food dish they created, or a baseball hat they made, a baseball cap they created, this is their baby. It deserves to be best, to be viewed the best it's going to be. So you have to take your time and process private images or client images the best you can and not undercooking them because it's just another photo. Keep that in mind the next time you do a photo shoot for somebody, treat the images with respect. This is their baby, this is their creation. You wanna make them look the best they can. This is just something I wanted to put out there. These are habits I picked up from stock photography. These are things that I learned that I hope I can help you guys avoid because these are problems that you might encounter when you branch out of stock. Uh, just remember to value yourself. Take the time to process the photos and don't take so many photos that your clients are gonna be like, what are you doing? If you're wondering what am I doing with all these lights and what all this equipment is and why I have newer uh, gear here, it's because I'm working on a big project and I asked different companies for help. So I need lighting equipment, I need something to eliminate this new studio. Yes, I am renting this space because I have a big project I wanna share with the world here soon. And all of you that have signed up to my monthly newsletter on wallersphotography.com, you'll be the first ones to know. I haven't started writing a newsletter yet, but I will soon. I have big plans in the works. I just hope I can get there soon. <laughs> because things, you know, things keep happening. But I will be renting this space as a studio. As always, whenever I work with a brand or a, a company, I always ask them for discount codes, referral links, things like that. So there will be a discount code here in the video description for anything in the newer store. Uh, whenever I can, I will always include discounts, something to help you guys out as well. Newer has all kinds of stuff in their store and some of these lights are amazing. <laughs> I can't believe how much this is gonna help me with the videos, especially in a bigger area like this. With that said guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments where are you watching this video from. Again, say bye BMB. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Like and subscribe. Uh, did I say like and subscribe? <laughs>